Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be working on making a replacement part for a paying customer. So that's kind of exciting. This particular part is one half of the feed screw out of a South Bend Heavy 10 lathe with a taper attachment. It's kind of similar to the feed screw that you would find in a South Bend 9A, which you may have seen me make on this channel before. This part does, however, come with some of its own challenges. One of the main ones being this bore here with an internal keyway. So yeah, definitely some problems to solve on this one. It should be pretty interesting and a lot of fun. Uh, by the way, the main issue with this particular part is that this section here, I hope you can see it, is it's bent pretty bad. It cocks off to one side there and that makes this entire part unusable which is why we're making a new one but yeah anyway that's what we're going to be doing so i guess i'll grab some material and let's get started all right so every time i make a feed screw i inevitably get asked the same question and that is what material do i use i use 1144 stress proof for all of my feed screws Basically, it's a free machining material that doesn't move around on you either during or after the machining process. I think the next thing that I want to work on is this keyway. This is the feature that I have the least amount of experience with. So I guess I just kind of want to make sure everything goes to plan before I spend a bunch of time machining the rest of this part. And for that reason, I think it's worth taking a quick minute to just talk about how I plan on making this keyway. The plan, I'll admit, is a simple one. I'm going to be doing the entire operation in the lathe. I have an old boring bar. I've turned down one end of that boring bar so that it will fit nicely inside of the bore with the cutting tool inserted. I have an eighth inch piece of high speed steel that's been ground to do the actual cutting. And the idea is to just work that tool back and forth inside the bore, taking off a little bit of material at a time. I will be using a carriage stop just so that I get a nice consistent depth at the end of the keyway. And I think the biggest consideration here is just to make sure that the spindle doesn't move at any point during the actual cutting. In order to prevent that, I've done two things. First, I've put the spindle into its lowest gear and then underneath the spindle I have a couple of machinist jacks. I'm using those machinist jacks to apply pressure to the spindle which keeps it from jiggling back and forth during the cutting. I think that came out relatively not awful. It did, however, take a couple of attempts, which I think perfectly illustrates why I wanted to knock it out early before moving on to machining the rest of the part.
All right. I think we're actually starting to get somewhere. I mean, it's starting to look like what it's supposed to look like, so that's always encouraging. At this point, there's really just a few things left to do. Of course, I still have to add the gear. There is also a small oil groove, at least that's what I think this is, a small oil groove that runs the length of this section of shaft here. There is another small keyway down the end here. This takes a round key, and this is what locks the, um, the hand wheel in place. So we'll put that keyway in there. And then there is also this small hole through the end of the shaft here. I am honestly not sure what this hole is for, but I'll go ahead and add it. I have no idea if it's something important. I don't want to not add it and then have it be an issue. So yeah, I guess I'll get this thing set up in the mill and we can knock out these last few features. And there we have it, one half of a cross slide feed screw for a South Bend Heavy 10 lathe with taper attachment. Of course, this one up top is the old one, the one on the bottom is the new one, and I think it came out rather nice actually. I am really happy with how this thing came out. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the most difficult part was definitely this internal keyway in this bore here. It did take me a couple of attempts to get this right, but eventually I did get it right, and I think even that came out pretty nice. So yeah, all that's left to do now is to get this thing packed up and shipped off to the customer. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so very much for watching. I do truly appreciate it. If you like this sort of thing and you wanna see more, I have plenty of videos on my channel. Like for instance, this video here where I make the tailstock die holder that you saw featured in this video. It's what I use to make the threads on the end of this feed screw. There are actually plans for that project and a lot of my other projects available on my Patreon. So you can download the plans, follow along and make one for yourself. I'll leave a link for that in the description down below. Again, thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next one very, very soon.